Hello, my name is Lisa. This is where I saw you're very welcome. Today is the 30th of December and tomorrow we get to say goodbye 2020. Cheers, thanks very much. Go away, don't come back. And we can welcome 2021 and hope that uh, it behaves itself a little bit better. So, because Christmas has come and gone and um, I was thinking maybe some people have had uh, a gift, a sewing machine, or they have gifted themselves one, or they've brought one in the, the sales. I thought maybe today might be a good time to talk about a beginner's project, sewing pattern. And the one I have in mind is this, it's a kimono, and it's the Simplicity 8097 kimono pattern. Um, it's plus size, so it starts in the US, that's an 18 to a 24. Europe, it's a 44 to a 50. And I think in the UK, that comes out like a, a 22, 24, 26, in and around there. But I'll find the, the right figures and I'll put them down below. This is a great beginner's kimono. I have seen, I mean, maybe if you've seen other patterns online, like on Pinterest, they'll sort of put like a traditional kimono is like five rectangles put together and the seams sewn up. This is different in as much as the shoulder of the arm of the sleeve where it meets the this seam curves. Now I'm going to show you later in the video how I piece that together, how that works out and how that looks. So it, uh, it drapes differently. There is more space i think basically what it means is there's more space here it's um and it doesn't have that vent that a traditional kimono would have as far as fabric goes well the world is your oyster just about everything boutique right chalice i don't know what that is craig de sheen double georgette gauze lightweight linen tights silky tights and cottons now brings us to this what is this all about well this is my art smock that i made using this as a template as a basic because it, when i paint and draw you can just see the jackson pollock i've made over here i make the most terrible terrible mess and my claws are beginning to get really mucked up and um, even though i'm only rotating through it seems to be the same four pairs of sweatpants and uh, big jumpers and and stuff they weren't going to last much longer if I kept on getting stuff all over them so my husband said honey you've got to do something you're the creative one make something uh, so I came up with this it's not this is only really a week old and I've wrecked it already I did color my daughter's hair and it did it, it kept although some of it soaked through and what I had on underneath didn't get stained. You can see the sleeves get most of the battering. Um, I, I'll show you in the, I'll show you on, on my dummy how I've sort of decided how to do this and like how I pieced it together. <laughs> this isn't a design feature, I just didn't bother sewing it and neither have I hemmed it <laughs> because I hate hemming and I don't, I, I don't know why and because I'm only going to be wearing this around the house I thought that'll do for me so there's this and it is made from an old bed sheet this so if you paint or if you if you do things like that this could be a great uh, test run for a kimono for, for this pattern um, the only thing I would say is this this cotton that's fine for like gouache acrylics and what have you a heavier solvent no I was I am going to make um another version in like calico a tough calico which should be able to withstand maybe more more abrasive stuff but well let's see I'll have to test on the fabric um my daughter said to me I look like the angel Gabriel <laughs> ready for the nativity play you know, maybe, you know, maybe that's an idea if you've got 
to make costumes for the kids for the nativity next year here's your angel gabriel ready to go so this was the first this so i frankenstein this from this kimono but just hang around a second i'll show you the other idea that i came up with ta-da this is the second project it's an old sari that i've upcycled into into a kimono using this pattern but i happen to make just a couple of adjustments because sari fabric a sari is a narrower piece of fabric uh, which meant that round the back i couldn't cut the back piece on the fold so i just cut it i had to cut two pieces out but whilst reminding myself to be careful to leave the seam allowance so everything's still fitted in here at the shoulders but yeah it worked out um and i love it i found this in a charity shop three years ago and as with often the case with brain waves it got put in a corner and promptly forgotten about and as more and more stuff got piled in um it got lost but when i rejigged everything around here it reappeared and as i had the pattern out to do the smock why not now the thing that of course i think i'm a genius for doing this i was able to keep the border here as a feature on the front there was lots of this um silver what do you call this is it brocade yeah i always think brocade is really heavy but it's like a um silver embroidered thing um there was loads of this left over now my plan had been to add it to the sleeve um but i didn't because i didn't i don't know why yeah i know why because my shoulder was hurting and i couldn't keep sewing unlike the smock this actually has been properly finished down the seams and uh, it has been hemmed so i love this i absolutely adore it i love the way that the fabric has got a shift in it i love the little bits of silver thread that go through it i love the color i i just think this is fabulous so that's another thing that you could you could have a go on or if you've got um a nice cotton duvet that maybe you love the fabric and the design of it make one of these in a lovely stiff cotton gorgeous in the summertime for just wandering around um that's if we're ever wandering around again but they're lovely just for wearing around the house so please stay and watch the rest of the video and let me talk you through both of these ideas um let me know what you think i uh, in summary i think this is a great little pattern to start with the instructions are really clear and so far everything that i've made with this has turned out fantastic it's a great place to start you can learn some new skills um if you practice on a piece of old bed sheet you can mess up to your heart's delight and then when you come to spend a bit of money on something expensive it's going to look fantastic you'll have worked through all the little problems so stay tuned enjoy and uh, come back again and see me soon take care happy new year bye for now this is a little overview of where i am so far in the process of piecing everything together those are the front parts of the kimono if i swing it around this way these are the two pieces that make up the back. See the seam up the middle. They all sort of meet there. I've turned over the edges here. This isn't perfect, but this is for myself. So you can see how really quite easy and simple the structure of a basic kimono is. The difference with the simplicity pattern is that there's a the shoulder on here is rounded. I've seen like a traditional kimono pattern where the sleeve is just a straight line here and uh, sort of falls in line with the side seam. However, the simplicity has a shoulder on it, 
um, I think it creates more drape or it just it sits better but because this is the plus size one this is going to be quite large and loose and drapey so the rounded edge here I have pinned there like that as best I can and this is this is just a little bit of a water stain I hope I hope I haven't left it in my morning toast on the table but anyway there are other little sort of spots and stains on this thing which is why I'm gonna gonna use it for my it's for my own personal use right so I'll be back presently when I've got so this is the side seam and as you can see that is that is quite generous but if you want it to make it super super floaty and because there is so much fabric in a, a sari and because I would rather not waste it I am inserting another panel just under the arm so this I'm going to cut this to a point so you're not increasing the size of the armhole so I'm going to cut this to a triangle here like so and then when that's done so when I've done that, I'll show you it pinned into place. Yay! So taking that triangular section, I've inserted it. That's an arrow point <clears throat> up here in the armpit, so it's not changing the shape of the armhole. And then it's going to create uh, an extra panel. <clears throat> so it's going to make this ginormous and very floaty and uh, comfortable for wafting around in. Let's just see how it works out. But because there's so much fabric and it's such a, uh, a loose construction, I don't think that's going to really alter the, um, the drape of anything. But anyway, it's only for myself for knocking around in the house, but it's kind of an experiment. Well, here is the finished masterpiece my uh, Frankenstein smock from a kimono as you can see this is very voluminous roomy I have put elastic here to keep to keep yeah, ah, most of it you can push it up your arms and do whatever it is you need to do but please God it will keep my sleeves clean at the bare minimum up here I did I put one of these little snappers on but it didn't work particularly well so what I did instead this is a bit of bias bias tape sewed one piece on there one on the other side and they uh, fairly self-explanatory I was going to go for one of I was great big, you know, stereotype Bugs Bunny artist with a big, big black bow. But no, I thought that's that's going to create more problems. So what happened here, how this became this fabulosity here. Up to these two seams, these two sections here, I chopped up and stuck in because I couldn't get it to work as a proper crossover. I wanted it to cross over, but I couldn't get it to work. So what I decided was just stick a bit in there and it should be all right. I haven't hemmed it as it is my want. I have left, I've left the sides open here. I've left the sides open here to, to make sitting down more convenient. Do you know what? I'm just going to wonder web that because uh, I, I can't do any more sewing at the moment, so I'll just I'll just quickly run around it with some underweb because this isn't public consumption. It's between you and I. So there you go. That is so that's me already uh, for the Tate and for my first retrospective anytime soon. Coming to a uh, bus stop near you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, Give me a like, subscribe, do all the things down below, leave a comment and come back and see me again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.